the number one thing that got me into competitive gaming uh, when I started, right, was I could make a team with my friends. We could go compete in an open tournament. And if we were good enough, we could win the whole thing. That's the most important aspect uh, that we're missing from COD right now is just more meaningful matches in, in a more open environment. So hopefully we get there one day. How does Vanguard feel so far compared to Black Ops and compared to Modern Warfare? I think Vanguard feels like Call of Duty, right? And I think that's something that they always have to hit every year. You know, with it being an annual release and there being a new game every single year, um, it becomes easy to lose that Call of Duty feel. I just think there's some stuff that needs to be worked out inside the game to, you know, make sure it's a more smooth experience for everybody. The past couple years, uh, we've had very different games. I mean, last year we had Cold War. Uh, which is kind of like a Black Ops 2 remaster in a way because of all the old maps that we were playing. It was a bit of a blast from the past. And then before that, we had Modern Warfare. It's a little difficult to compare all three of the past titles just because they're so different in, in terms of being Call of Duty. Is there anything specific that pros are talking about, discussing heading into season three that, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't mind see change in a, in a patch note uh, come January? One of the main criticisms I've seen from not only the pros, but from the community as a whole is, is that the time to kill is, is a little too fast. I'm not sure if that's an adjustable thing because I mean, they build the game around you having a certain amount of health, the guns doing a certain amount of damage. So I think something like the health and the time to kill of a game is, is one of the hardest things to change just because it's a foundational core piece of the game. I think the biggest thing for me is, is um, the competitive balance of a lot of the maps. I think that it's always a bit of a difficult thing to figure out because, you know, the game comes out and the CDL is like, OK, we trust you guys on what maps you think are competitive. You guys play them all and you tell us what the maps are for the CDL season. We'll vote on them. We've got uh, about four or five in, in Respawn and in, in S&D. We're hoping for, for some throwback maps. Um, Sledgehammer, the last game they made was the World War II game. And uh, there was a couple good maps in there that we think would work really well in Vanguard. You know, one of them being uh, St. Marie Dumont, which was an old map that was really good. Another one was called London Docks, which was really good. And, you know, if we could somehow get both of those maps back, they would definitely go into our map pool. I'm making a play. Yeah, I'm bottom there. Two weeks ago, Halo Championship Series launched and competitive circuit has turned some heads. I'm curious what your what your thoughts are. They have a great team over there running their grassroots tournament system at eSports Engine. They had the, the ability to work six years on this, right? I think the last Halo came out in 2015. Is there anything you think CDL could learn from HCS? You have open tournaments, any team can end up at Rally. You can stream an HCS game from Twitch if you wanted to and commentate on it, which is not necessarily something you can do in an Activision Blizzard League. You just listed a lot of things that I, I think we wish we had. That open tournament structure where you're having all these amateur teams competing, you have the pro teams kind of like waiting in the pools or with better seeds and, and it culminating over a couple days to like getting down to top 64 and top 32, top 16, and then the fight for the top spot and, and the hype behind that, I think that was one of the most entertaining times of my life. Obviously that's very difficult with the franchise structure. Right now we only have 11 teams, but 12 teams is what the CDL uh, has had the last two years. They paid millions of dollars to, to get in front of the screen and to be on stream and to get their brand out there. Why would they ever play an amateur team who is not paid for that? Why would they get the same airtime and potentially even beat the pro teams? I think there's going to have to be some overhaul in, in the ownership of CDL teams, like in their minds. There's going to have to be some kind of like changing of the tides where uh, they're going to be OK with that. Right. I think people want to see the best amateur teams compete against the best pro teams. Right. I think they want to see. Um, these bigger tournaments, these bigger storylines, these it's driving towards a, a penultimate goal. But I think like Halo has a long way to go to, to get to where Call of Duty's at. We've been building this Call of Duty thing for almost 10 years straight now. We got Activision to, to fully sanction uh, the league and to accept buy-ins. I worked as an independent contractor my whole life, so I didn't get benefits. I didn't get 401k. I didn't get any of that until two years ago when the CDL franchise. And now I'm, I've been a full-time employee the last two, three years. And I think for Halo to get to that point, it's going to be a long, long time. 
is that a factor at all in your head or is it just more of like no this open environment would be a ton of fun and like from your perspective as a player how do you square that showing recognition to these amateur players and these challenger players is necessary in call of duty to further the pipeline i think that right now the challengers amateur scene is in one of the worst states it's ever been in and i think that having opportunities for these amateur players to show what they're made of against the best in the world might open up a lot more opportunities and i think that's the biggest thing it's just people want to see more competition they want to see more matches they want to see more call of duty 